Where does this information come from? Constance, how are you getting all this information? Not how is in technique, but where are you getting it from? I hope you enjoy our time together. In a nutshell, in my experience, and for me personally, the information comes from three different places or three different areas. One is your own wise self. Two, a spiritual connection that's made. In other words, conversing with the higher consciousness of others. And three, channeling, when you channel. So these are different ways that the information can come to you. I'm going to start with the last one first. I'm going to start with channeling. When I deliver information to people, sometimes I channel the information. And when I do that, I allow spirit to share my body, to deliver messages to other people, whether it's a one-on-one -on -one read or for a group, or even the group could be on this podcast. Haven't done that yet. I'm letting spirit come in and say what they want without interruption by me. Um, I do my best. I don't edit. I know I work for spirit predominantly, mostly, fully, completely. And so I deliver what I'm given especially because I only work with the highest realms. If I have a difficult time with the information that's coming through because I can't translate it into words, sometimes I will let spirit speak through me. I don't know, did I tell you my Jesus stories? I'll get to the Jesus stories where Jesus shared my body and things happened. Um, and we know I did the one, um, anyway. Point being, channeling is one. And uh, that's a beautiful one to do, and I don't do it as often as I might, but I do it when the need arises. I hope that answers the question. Why on earth did I say predominantly, mostly, fully, completely that I work for spirit? Why? Because <laughs> people are like, well, shouldn't you be free? And when I do reads and when I do teachings, usually in my space and I have to pay for my space and I have to pay the rent, I collect money. I get paid for my work. I work for spirit, even though you pay me. That's why the hesitation there. So I'm just wanting to clarify that. What can happen when I allow spirit to channel through me or I channel spirit is sometimes my face might change or my voice might change a little, nothing extreme. I have channeled these two healing beings, uh, a beautiful, large black woman and a, I think I was her in another life, to be honest, <laughs> and this really cool Asian man. Both of them are healers. Um, the Asian man, he's, it's really difficult for me to hold his energy. So sometimes wait, wait for it. I drool like, cause I just can't, <laughs> it's so tricky. Both of them are powerful when they come through in healing sessions. I know to let them have, have at it because their energy in my body offers a different level of healing to the person on the table, on my treatment table. So I have had these times also in talks. I think I have, I'm sure I still have one on my YouTube channel where I talk about um, higher conscious connection. And in it, God channeled through me. I was like, wow, I did not expect that coming. The energy around me was large and huge and incredible. And I just had to give way to the voices coming through. And those were my channeling experiences that I want to tell you about today. Actually, that's all I'm going to say about those channeling experiences. I'm just telling you that sometimes my the look on my face changes or my mannerism changes, you know? Sometimes I crack myself up. Like if I separate myself and I look at myself and I'm like, Constance, you're so trusting. I cannot believe that you consecrated your life to this work. You look so funny, like doing these channelings. And then I think, okay, whatever. <laughs> You know, I'm just such a servant. I'm such a, I don't even know, right? But, you know, when you're willing to kind of drop it all and just offer it up, you never know what is going to be asked of you. And 
I'm grateful for the experiences when I do channel because they are beautiful and amazing. And um, and so I guess what I'm saying is if you're guided eventually in your life or maybe you are already to be a channel, a vessel of light, that spirit speaks through you by using your vocal cords and maybe your mannerisms and shares your body so that healing can be offered. I just ask you to go with grace and, um, you know, really imagine intentioning to surround yourself with light and love so that you are just going to the highest of the high and that's the only beings that you allow to share your space because you only want the good guys <laughs> working with you right that's why I'm so trusting I can feel who it is so I want you to lean into it and feel in your heart who who it is um, more about that later The first one I mentioned was your own wise self. That's how you can get the information, your own wise self. Usually we are doing this by making a connection psychically to others. And when you make a psychic connection, you're just making a soul connection to their energy, maybe to their physical, emotional, mental state. You're making a psychic connection to read off their energy field, their desires or inside their fears, their ego-based wishes and dreams. Only what they're emitting to the world, we can psychically read to pick out the information. It's, I liken it to shining a flashlight when someone comes before me. You can psychically look and see the uh, chakras and tell them what's going on in the chakras. So this is you with your psychic soul senses, your soul senses, reading the energy around them, getting the impressions. You can do this also, you know, when you're sitting for someone else and you're just giving them a quote unquote psychic read or get coming up with what's happening in their world right now. Or you can also do it for your own personal guidance. You know, when, when your conscience is bothering you about something, this is maybe because your conscience is your higher self knowing and it knows the difference between right and wrong. So it clues you in as to what to do and where to go. So you can also go through your own internal state through your chakras and you can look at yourself in the mirror like I did when I was a kid to look at, at psychic, psychically to see past lifetimes, um, images and stuff like that. So you can get the information by making a psychic connection to someone or someone else. Now, this is a very fine difference, but I am a stickler with this work, which is why we're going step by step, baby step. All right. But you'll see what I mean when I get to the next one. I want to make sure I was clear when you're reading someone else, it's not only what they're emitting to the world. It's also, you can look and see what they're hiding, <laughs> what they're hiding, what they may even be hiding from themselves that they don't realize, you know, past life, or I mean, I'm sorry, it, you can look at past lives, but also current life traumas or things that are kind of holding them up. This is all can be done through a psychic connection that you're making to someone. Another way that this psychic connection can happen not just the seeing with the inner eye and hearing with the inner ear and feeling emotionally and physically and smelling and tasting, all those different ways we're gonna get into soon. You can also um, connect using your own wise self with an empathic connection. Some people are more uh, wired for empathic connection but I think that more and more with the evolution of the planet and our desperate need to realize we are one and we are connected and what we do affects others people are being um, turned on empathically I think more kids are being born empathically and empathic connection has to do with being able to or having your field your energy field, remember we spoke to a little bit about energy, blends literally with another. So this empathic connection allows you to um, feel what others are feeling emotionally, what they're feeling physically, or to understand intellectually where their thought process is, right? You can also make an empathic connection not only to other people, 
but for your own guidance. Remember I said hold um, the food up to your stomach to see how does it make you feel. You are making an empathic connection to that product, that household product, food or cleaners or whatnot. You're holding it up, you're melding your energy field with it, really, truly, and questioning, is this right for me? And again, the places, remember my story about walking into places and feeling it? It's because my energy field was tapping into the energy field of the place. I was literally making an empathic connection. Different than empathy, it's empathic. It is a way, it's a, a way that we can retrieve and get, if you will, an experience, um, soul information. So again, your own wise self can get the information. When I, when I say, where does all this information come from, Constance? How are you able to read people and get all these channeled soul reads and everything? Um, you, you can do it from yourself, a psychic connection or an empathic connection. There's a fine difference between the two. And as we progress further, going greater into detail about each of them week to week so that you can practice these at home, you'll understand what I'm saying. You might want to re-listen to this. I might want to re-listen to this going, God, does this even make sense? I adore you for listening. The last way I get information, which I think you guys can too, you people can too, is by making a spiritual connection. You've heard me do this and talk about this before. I can, we can make a spiritual connection for our own benefit, talking and conversing with spirit um, for our own benefit and our own guidance throughout the day. You know, it's how we go to God or loved ones that have crossed we can chat with them or whatnot or um, guides angels you could also make this spiritual connection to deliver messages to someone else when you do that you're acting as a medium you are the you know you're acting as an intermediary you're hearing you're receiving the information and you're passing it along to someone that's sitting before you um, when I talk about making a spiritual connection as the third way of where does the information come from, you are actually conversing with other realms of spirit through their higher consciousness. So how does that work? I, you know, I'm not, when I do someone's animal communication, I'm not talking to the dog, raw, 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 raw. I am tuning in to its higher self and using my higher self, my soul self. That's why all this is soul awareness. My soul self is my higher self going into those places to have conversation with the dog to then maybe deliver it to the owner. You can also make the spiritual connection because we all have spirit, right? Everything is spirit um, and energy. We all have spirits. For those of you that have animals, you know they have spirits. <laughs> um, trees have spirits. Um, you can also connect with loved ones that have crossed, loved ones that are here on the planet through this same kind of connection. Um, if you're having uh, issues with conversing or communicating with a loved one or uh, maybe a not so loved one that you wish they'd understand what you're trying to explain and they're not hearing it in the physical, you could try doing a conversation through um, the through connecting with their own higher self and your higher self with them. It's also the way that we connect with angels and enlightened beings and spirit guides and God. It's all through our own higher consciousness. And we're connecting our soul to their soul. Um, God's different because God's everything and everywhere. I think you understand what I'm saying. I'm just wanting to give you a brief look at these three different ways. So with the third one, the spiritual connection, which was actually the second one when I get the, gave you the list. Don't you love me? You just got to roll with it, right? That one is when you converse with the higher consciousness of others, no matter where they are. That's why I can, you can, I can, we can talk to the higher consciousness of non-vocal humans. Um, doesn't matter where they are. Doesn't matter if they, you know, for those of you that go say, oh, what if my dad reincarnated already? Well, yeah, you could still get in touch with this higher consciousness that is aware of the lifetime that he experienced with you. That's why psychics usually can, or mediums usually can get in touch with someone who passed, you know, generations ago. So there you have it. When people ask me, where do you get your information from, Constance? Those are the three areas my own wise self, my spiritual connections, and channeling. In other words, I can go in psychically, look 
and all around you see what's going on in your chakras whatever wherever I can look in your dream time I can look in their past lives those are all via my psychic abilities my that making a psychic connection I can also use an empathic connection while still using my soul senses it's a different form I blend my energy field with yours to let you know listen you're feeling this I'm feeling that or when you're trying to say something to me and I you know you're not you can't gather the words I'll go into your thought processes and yes read your mind sorry cats out of the bag or that's all my wise self doing it or I could go to someone else to get information for you I can make a spiritual connection to God the angels your loved ones on the other side you know whomever your animal whatever your kids your lover your whatever make that spiritual connection and get information from them to deliver to you or I can channel the information I can let spirit speak directly through me and like I said I only go the highest of the highs angels and God and really high evolved God guides like those two healers that work through me on occasion so those are the three ways I get information I wonder where your information comes from <laughs> I was tempted to do this session after I got into all the different psychic centers that we perceive information from, but I just felt like this was the better place to plop it in. That's why I said, you know, maybe after we go through the next run, you might want to re-listen to this. I might want to re-listen to this. Whatever. You know, some of the stuff is so overlapping and layered like a yummy cake that you just, you try to bite in one section of it and you get all those flavors mixed in because there's a lot of ingredients. So thanks for bearing with me. Totally love that you tuned in. Totally loved that you're listening. Totally love that you're uh, working on your soul's journey and expanding yourself. And you've been listening to, what have you been listening to? <laughs> Soul Awareness with Constance Mesmer. Oh my God. Thanks for tuning in. Legally speaking, this podcast is presented solely for educational, spiritual, and entertainment purposes. It is not intended as a substitute for medical diagnosis, treatment, or the advice of a physician, psychotherapist, or other qualified professional. You should not use this information to diagnose or treat a health problem or condition. Always check with your doctor. Thank you. Thank you for joining us today. If you've enjoyed this episode of Soul Awareness with Constance Mesmer, we'd like to encourage you to continue your spiritual journey with this next episode.